and no unity at the G20 summit this weekend. I never thought I'd see the day when European leaders got it and our own president was so clueless. But i got to tell you, this president is clueless. If President Obama thinks he's asserting leadership, I hope he knows he's leading us all in the wrong direction. European leaders want to put the brakes on runaway government spending. President Obama, he says he thinks the best way to go now is to spend us into more debt that we can afford. So he went to Toronto to tell world leaders, quote, we can't all rush to the exits at the same time. Great. So we'll be the last one stuck inside the burning house. I, I don't think the president ever heard the expression. Be damn sure you've got a seat when the music stops playing. Here's the president. Keep in mind that we had already proposed a long time ago that we were going to cut our deficits in half by 2013. And so the time frame uh, and the measures that have been adopted are consistent with our view that it is important for us to make sure that in the medium and long term we are paying attention to the big deficits and debts that we have out there. What we did say coming to this conference is we can't all rush to the exits at the same time. So countries that have surpluses uh, should think about how can they spur growth and how can they spur demand. Not all of those involve stimulus. Some of them might involve structural changes in their economies. Do you realize a year and a half this son of a gun didn't even know what economics was and now he's telling other countries how to run theirs? I love it. This guy, this guy's a beauty. This fella is a beauty. He doesn't have a clue how to run this economy, and he's telling other world leaders how to run theirs. What do you do with somebody like that? I mean, how do you talk to them? Did you Do you notice a certain quality about this president? Do you notice he's lecturing us? He always lectures us. And I don't think he knows what he's talking about. By the way, we can't all rush to the exits at the same time. Exits from what? Mr. Obama, you don't have a clue about what you're talking about. You're talking about an international order of financial systems and economies. And, Mr. President, you've got a national problem, the U.S. problem. You have 30 million Americans underemployed, unemployed, and discouraged so discouraged they're not in the labor market. You have an, a what's called a real, real unemployment rate in this country of just about 17%. And you are exerting leadership in such a fashion as to assure that that percentage is going to go higher, not lower. Please quit hectoring and lecturing and please start talking about moving this country forward into the 21st century. Well, the G20, you know, they broke up without having accomplished anything. Uh, it's uh, the president had the temerity, of course, uh, the chutzpah to say he's eventually going to cut spending next year, and he's calling, quote-unquote, a bluff. Who is he? Kenny Rogers, the gambler? Who's bluffing? He thinks that somebody's playing politics by saying we want to see smaller debts, smaller deficits, and we want to see smaller government. And the way to get there is not to raise taxes. We're begging you to get runaway spending under control, Mr. President. Your own budget director is leaving. Do you understand the symbolism of that, Mr. President? Peter Arzag is the first cabinet-level member of your administration to say adios, Mr. President, because he knows you don't have a chance in hell of making sense or rationalizing your policies with your fiscal policy. And now you want to spend us into oblivion, and you have the, the temerity to sit there in Toronto and look at all those other world leaders and act like you know what the hell you're talking about. Good grief, Mr. President, get a grip. Now you've got morons like New York Times columnist Paul Krugman arguing they're in the midst of another depression that Obama, you need to spend us out of it. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? You have President Obama trying to tell other world leaders we need to spend, spend, spend. Gee, I wonder how a confidence vote for 
Barack Obama would come out these days. Here is what he had to say. One of the interesting things that's uh, happened over the last 18 months as president is, for some reason, people keep on being surprised when I do what I said I was going to do. So I say I'm going to reform our health care system, and people think, well, gosh, that's not smart politics. Maybe we should hold off. Or I say we're going to move forward on don't ask, don't tell. Uh, somehow people uh, say, you know, well, why are you doing that? Uh, you know, I'm not sure that's good politics. I'm doing it because I said I was going to do it, and I think it's the right thing to do. And uh, people should learn that lesson about me because next year when I start presenting uh, some very difficult choices to the country, uh, you know, I hope some of these folks who are hollering about deficits and debt uh, step up because I'm calling their bluff. You got it. Uh, and we'll see how uh, much uh, of, of that, uh, how much of the political arguments they're making right now are real and how much of it was just politics. Well, Mr. President, you better learn this about me. When I say what you're doing is dumb, I mean what you're doing is dumb. You're going to do what you say you're going to do. Well, here's a couple of things that you didn't when you said you would. Like create an open and transparent government. Uh, when you said that you would put up five days legislation before you'd sign it, uh, like you would have, uh, you know, I, I mean, you want me to go through the list, Mr. President. You're talking, you're talking big and talking uh, tough, and, man, you're coming out just skinny, all right? You're coming out just skinny. You, it took you 420 days to run up the national debt but $2 trillion. That's what you did. You created a stimulus package, that's what you did, that hasn't stimulated the economy. Uh, by the way, Mr. President, if you haven't looked of late, the markets don't much like what you're doing. They don't like what you're saying you're going to do. And frankly, they don't think you know what you're doing, speaking of doing. And furthermore, I noticed you messed up there a little bit. I want to give you a chance maybe later this week to fix it. You do what you do because you say what you do. You, I love the way you say do. But now you started calling this a country again. Just when we got used to you calling us a country. Country, an economy. And, uh, and now you're back to an economy and a country. Would you make up your mind? I mean, I mean, we got to have a president for all the people. we got to have a president gets the word somewhat similar, for, you know. Give us, a, you know, when you're going to pronounce words, pronounce them. I was getting into that kind of uh, biblical thing you do, that cadence thing. I was, I was starting to like that. Now you're going back to just plain old English. What's that about?